Ooh, I wonder what Gracie's got on her mind. Looks like she's been digging out some breakfast foods. Oh, she must be getting everything out so Papa can choose. So hey, maybe I, if our friends and family stop by, I could share them with them too. Ooh, she's got a lot of stuff out. Yeah, maybe she wants us to talk about it. Or maybe not. Been seeing a lot of things about what boomers eat for breakfast these days. I really don't think they've caught on. Because I know what we like. Oh, well, hello there, friends and family. So good to see you again here in the little old country kitchen. And you might have seen Gracie's got something on her mind. And since she decided to stop by and sit a while, let's talk about what boomers really eat for breakfast. Or at least this little old boomer does. Okay? So as you can see, she's got a variety of things out here from cold cereals to hot ones. And of course, I think she's got much more to drag out. Because we have a lot of choices for breakfast here in the little old country kitchen. And she's right, I do enjoy a cold cereal from time to time. And I try to pick out now the more healthier ones. Like this one right here, by our fine friends at Post. Great grains cereal. It's got raisins, dates, and pecans. It says it's Real delicious, raisin and dates. It's non-GMO. Yes, it is. And then as you can see, and as you can see, it's fortified. And that's a fact. Most cereals in the U.S. are fortified. And that came about, I think, in the 30s, during the Great Depression, or shortly thereafter. I could be wrong. And as you can see, it's got all kinds of things. Vitamin D, Calcium, iron, potassium, vitamin A, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, folate, vitamin B12, phosphorus, magnesium, and zinc. And the ingredients are whole grain, wheat, raisins, cane sugar, which I prefer, whole grain rolled oats, dates, wheat flour, malted barley flour, rice flour, pecans, Expellular pressed canola oil, salt, rice syrup, molasses, and BHT. Yep, I wish it didn't have that one. But I try to pick as healthy as I can be. And it's not that bad in sugar. It's only 4 grams added sugar for 9% of your recommended daily value. And one 3 quarter cup has 4 grams of protein. So... Like I say, I enjoy it from time to time. Is it the very best you can eat? Maybe not. But I think it's one of the better ones to pick from. And as a treat, and I don't eat much this sweet, I got me some cinnamon chicks. It reminds me of my childhood. It's got made with 100% real cinnamon. No high fructose corn syrup. No artificial colors or flavors. It's gluten free. And the reason for that, it's made with rice flour. And it's got a plethora of vitamins fortified in it as well. And its ingredients are whole grain rice, sugar, canola and or sunflower oil, salt, cinnamon, molasses, and something that surprised me a lot was rosemary extract. Natural flavor, vitamin E. So here again, it may not be the healthiest, but it's probably not the worst. And I can remember eating chicks as a child. Did you? Maybe in the comments below the video, you can tell me, do you still eat cold cereal? And what's your favorites that you enjoy? So something, especially when the winds start to blow cold, that we used to have, and Mama often made up, was oatmeal. 100% natural. And this is your quick one minute oatmeal. Yes, it is. But she just wouldn't slop down just a bowl of mush. Mom could dress this right on up. And this is just oats. And how a mother would serve this up, like I say, was just not plain oatmeal. She'd add a brown sugar and cinnamon at times. Or she'd open up some canned fruit, like canned peaches, pears, 
or even fruit cocktail and put a dollop on top. Ooh, we loved it. But another one from our childhood that I still enjoy, and maybe you do too, is cream of wheat hot cereal. And you can see right there, the added fruit. And that's exactly what my mother did. She'd add canned fruit when fresh fruit was not in season. Because way back when we were all children, you just couldn't go to the store and find fresh fruit all around the year. But we really enjoyed our hot oatmeal and our hot cream of wheat during the cold winter days. And I still do. And of course, something that we picked up a taste for and we didn't even know about until we came south was grits. Yeah, we came from the Northeast, primarily Pennsylvania and New York State. And just grits weren't on our radar until we came to the South. And it is a Southern staple for breakfast. Now as well, for dinner time too. Maybe you've had shrimp and grits or some other culinary delight with grits too. But yes, I enjoy them. My daughter does too. And these are the instant variety come in flavors, but I make up plain grits and flavor them up myself as well. Adding bacon, sausage. I'll even slip in some fruit as I do my cream of wheat and my oatmeal. Fresh blueberries when I have them. Frozen ones when I don't. And I'll still open those cans of fruit and add to it too. But these are just some of the selections that I eat. But, like always, even when we were growing up, we had what we called the big breakfast. And I still carried on that tradition with my children and still do to this day. Maybe, if you want to see a bit more, I can show it to you. Let's get Gracie to put this all up and we'll show you just what we call a big breakfast here in the little old country kitchen. On the weekends, something that my mother made that was really special to all of us, on the weekends, when we weren't so rushed, was what she called the big breakfast. And yep, that would be eggs in all kinds of ways. We might have soft boiled, hard boiled, we might have fried, sunny side up, over easy, scrambled, or even poached. And of course she'd have the familiar breakfast meats. We would enjoy country ham that we have right here. Bacon. Now this is fully cooked that I got on sale for only two dollars a box. I thought that was quite real. And then of course we'd have our sausage. And nothing beats Swaggerty's, because if you know, you know. And of course, we'd have some bread to complement the meal. Primarily, since we were from the Northeast, we preferred toast, or bagels, or even English muffins. And, on occasion, some homemade biscuits, like this one right here. It's the only one I got left from the last batch that I made. And you know, my mother also would cook up from time to time, as I have too, things like French toast and pancakes. But these are the things that I choose from when I get up in the morning. And it all depends on how I feel. Some mornings, all I feel like is a bowl of cold cereal with some fruit and some juice, maybe a glass of milk. And like I say, since it reminds me of my childhood, when the winds blow cooler and get cold, I get that anchor for some nice oatmeal, all hot, and you know that fills you up, or the cream of wheat, or even a nice bowl of grits. So yeah, in the comments below the video, let me know what things you can remember enjoying for breakfast in your childhood 
and what you still enjoy every day in your household. I think we'd all want to know, but I just thought, since I'm having breakfast for dinner tonight that I just discussed, what we used to do, and I still do, when it's time to break my fast. Whew, that made me hungry. Oh, there you are again, friend and family. Well, yeah, like I say, let me know what you, since we're all about the same age, some older, some newer, what you enjoy when you break your fast, when the sun comes up. And hey, until we see you on that next episode of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood, y'all take care, stay safe out there, and may God bless you all as you bless those in your lives. You know we love you. Goodbye for now. Yep, I'm getting hungry, Gracie. I know you are too. What do you say, bacon? You love your bacon. Okay. It's quick enough. Just slap it in the microwave. Zap it a little bit. And it's ready. <laughs> you licking your lips. Yeah. Okay. Oh, later all.